Hello, and welcome to Third Eye Thinkers. I'm your host, Michelle Welch. Hello, I'm your host, Megan Benanti. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, Michelle, how are you? I'm here. She's here. <laughs> She's functioning. Okay. You said, let's keep it real. So, we are it. keeping it real, <laughs> and we are discussing post-holidays. So, this is about how to restore yourself, and um, we all need a little of that uh, after the uh, craziness of, of holiday time. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what are some of your thoughts on that, Michelle? <laughs> My thoughts are maybe take a long vacation and skip the whole thing. <laughs> and that's actually a I'm totally brilliant serious. idea. Yeah. <laughs> this year, I wish that's what we had, had done. Um, I think it's really nice to uh, get together with people you love and, and celebrate things, but I have always struggled with all the, and we've had this on another show where we t- I discussed this, but I've always struggled with all the things that I feel are imposed upon me during the holidays. And I can tell you I'm down to very few of those, but there's just something about the holidays that is just not the healthiest time of year for me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know there are a lot of people out there that are the same way. And I would like to add to that. I do think part of that relates to how old your children are and where you are in that game. Mm -hmm. So because I have kids that live under my roof that at 14 and 16, but then I also have um, my stepchildren and my daughter-in-law and my grandson. And so they're old enough that they're taking on different responsibilities now. And what it's required of me is being more flexible with schedule and how we do things. But Mm -hmm. it's also, um, it's not all on me. And you have a lot more responsibility thrown your way. And especially when your kids, um, Michelle's children are out of the house, in college, post-college. And then we have, and then I have um, my children that are, you know, Roger's children, my stepchildren that are in the house part of the time. So I think part of it also is learning to, even those of you who've gone through uh, a divorce and maybe remarried, and when you're trying to blend that, and for me, it was a 26-year marriage uh, that, that that marriage ended, and so now I have a wonderful marriage with Roger, and we've been married for quite some time now, but it's still... Uh, every year an adjustment how do you and then I had a son get married so I think that's true for uh, so he's going to their house you know Mm -hmm. so it's it's very um, probably true for a lot of people given the the divorce rate you know which is just a fact Mm -hmm. and blending families and some people do that better than others yep very true Well, one of the things that I always think is really important uh, post-Christmas is cleanup. And (laughs) um, I I actually, one year, even after everybody got their presents and was done, because we celebrate a lot on, uh, our big Christmas tends to be on Christmas Eve. And so um, after Santa had done presents in the morning, um, man, I wiped that tree out. I was like, I'm done. But I will say we use a live tree. And so when you're purchasing your tree at Thanksgiving, um, I ever I noticed, you know, like a week or two before Christmas, like the branches were hanging down mm-hmm. because I probably have like, you know, 400 ornaments on there. But, right. <laughs> um, everything's like wilted down and it's really brittle and the water doesn't smell very good anymore. So um I look forward to taking it all down and getting the house back to normal. And I will, for me, it's it's sort of critical, like I want to do it in a day and really be cleared out energetically from that. Um, I'm I'm that way too with anything, any of the Christmas decorations or pretty much the minute it's over, (laughs) everything's out out, of the house. Yes. And, and I think that it is, it, the energetic component is huge. I don't know that everyone really realizes that, but I'm um, not that leaving your tree up. If let's say you have an artificial tree, that's not going to be a fa- fire hazard. Not that that's a bad thing if you really enjoy it, but if it's something that you're ready to go ahead and put up because you're looking at that tree every second going, you know, Oh no, I've got to put that up. Uh, a friend of mine has a tradition that they put the tree, everything up together. Mm -hmm. just as though you decorate it together and they commemorate like as they're the same way when they're putting it up and clean up 
they're talking about where that ornament came from and and reminiscing in that way so that that might be something some of uh, the listeners could do to not dread it so much because yeah. they make it kind of a time of laughing and celebrating and picking up the, you know the things in the tree oh that's awesome yeah one of the things I will have the children help me remove all the ornaments and then I wrap them separately on my mm-hmm. own um, but with the the tree being dead that energy feels dead to me mm-hmm. and that needs to go out um, and I, I generally get that done before the before I might even get the ornaments wrapped up um, and uh, you know one of the things we always do and I think that a lot of people do this is the purging that happens it's like okay we got new wardrobe let's clean out the old and so that tends to be kind of a family affair that we all get into like let's go through your closets kids and you know what do we not need anymore and this year was one too where I really felt like holiday stuff there's a lot of stuff that's either outdated or broken or um, you know it's not really serving a purpose anymore around Christmas and it's like okay what can we let go of in regards to that right and that's a great way to bring in the new year to think Mm -hmm. about the things that we're going to release so that we can bring in the new energy and anything that we are wanting to bring in for that new year absolutely so true yeah so what else do you do um (laughs) i know that you cook a lot and you had your your office party Mm -hmm. at your house and i know that you are you're pretty domestic i mean you're a great hostess so is that the pretty much the only party because that's a big one that you have during the holidays It is now. We used to do a lot more. And I actually did reach out to some friends to see if they wanted to come over on Christmas Eve night this year uh, because we've had to um, alter for my uh, grandson and stuff. And um, uh, no one was available, so which is fine. Um, But we still were kind of like, well, we could make this work. And it's like, and then I also went through that thing of like, do I take on more stuff? What am I doing to myself? Is this something I really want to do? Right. I used to love and really fed on the energy of being a hostess and pleasing everyone. And um, and I, I work so much now that I don't actually practice cooking as much as I used to either. So I don't automatically like know what I'm going to make. Whereas in the past, it was like, oh, yeah, I'll go there and do that. And, you know, everything came together. Right. Um, what about you? What energetically, um, as far as like, even if it wasn't related to decor, what would you do to clear the house for you between, um, Christmas and New Year's to prepare for the new year? I think the best thing to do is just to clear any, the same thing, clear out anything that you don't need, um, that, you know, if you haven't used it in a year, what do they say? Two. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, clothes especially clothes I say a year a year and I I, but I will say I'm not great at it I will say that Uh, Roger and I are we've kind of been in a holding pattern for quite some time of this house that we're in saying we're not going to be in this house and I think that's something that you and a lot of people I'm sure I'm not the only one who does that also Uh, I would recommend to not do what we've done I, I would recommend to to get in a house and make it a home no matter how long you're going to be there so if you're going to be there you think okay this is just a house or place we're staying or living for six months to a year and then we're going to find something else this is temporary i would recommend settling in as though it's your home not i don't mean necessarily financially i mean energetically settling in and really making it your home because that's each of those days are their time out of your life so anytime you're just putting your life on hold and saying, when this, then this. So right. when I lose weight, I will go on that beach vacation. When I get my new house, I will have people over. When I clean my house and it looks perfect and I have all the decorations and, and things I want, I'll have people over. And I just think uh, the older I get, the more I realize that that's not a great way to live. Uh, yeah. Just it's the, all of the when I do this, then I'll do that. If we could just get rid of that and just live in our moment, uh, I think we'd all be a lot happier. 
Yeah. Oh, well, you know, and one great thing to me about hosting over the holidays, too, was refreshing the house. There's been years where I would paint the, we have like a splash wall that is a color. And I used to paint that thing all the time. I've gotten kind of lazy in the last few years. I haven't changed it. But um, I did go out and I got, you know, I got some new throw rugs and, you know, it just really freshened up the place, which needed to be done. And I was kind of putting it off because I don't have, um, like I have, uh, you know, uh, travel angels. I don't have rug angels. Like I have dogs. I have three <laughs> dogs. So <laughs> rugs have very short lives in my home. So I won't spend money on expensive rugs anymore. Mm-hmm. And, um, but luckily we have lots of affordable places out there that have some really great cheap rugs. And, um, so I, I, I kind of fixed up the house, which was good and n- necessary. Good. Yeah. Right. So. It is necessary. And I think cleanup of just a lot of things towards the end of the year. Uh, just, again, energetically, it's it doesn't have to be your home. It can be just anything in your life that you're looking at, and it's just not serving you the way, uh, when I, I use that phrase, you know, it's not serving your highest and best good, then maybe you should take a look at it again and see how you're going to fix that. I don't really believe in... S- I believe in them because they're real and people, they're tangible and people do them. (laughs) New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say I don't believe in them. I just don't practice them so much. I try to do that all year long. If I try to look at things like at the new moons and the full moons and if things aren't serving me uh, or there's something else I want to bring into my life, I I utilize the new moons and the full moons for those just as much as a new year. Wow. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Another one I think is good to tackle is the clean out of the fridge. And (laughs) if people have not done that, um, you know, you will find yourself like either not eating or you're eating uh, food that could be a little questionable um, or you're having to pull it out and sniff it, which is really undesirable. (laughs) So, um, you know, I always think it's really good after Christmas to go in, clear that out. Put in fresh baking soda if you haven't changed it out, because that should be changed out, you know, pretty right. regularly. Um, and clean your shelves, you know, wipe right. any schmutzy stuff off. Um, the freezer is a whole nother one to tackle because you got to turn that off. It's hard to cl- really hard to clean the freezer. Right. But um, I think anything that is related to that purging, um, and I'm very physical about it, so uh, I attack things like that. I attack corners and cobwebs and all sorts of weird places uh right oh baseboards another one if your housekeeper doesn't do that and you know the the little edging you can get little fuzzies on there a little dust on there or or um if your carpeting goes out of the corner you know you can get the little fuzzies in there and all that has to go and I will go yeah (laughs) not that is not gonna stay that's nasty oh I even went shopping and saw it you know if I see it in the dressing rooms Mm -hmm. I will tell people oh you really need to clean your dust bunnies out there that's good because it's it's yuck I don't want to change yourself at Soltopia when Megan comes Ah! (laughs) (laughs) you don't have dressing rooms right that's right. Okay, but, but so I wouldn't notice. I think. Oh yeah, restrooms are important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But your restrooms have always been clean. Yeah, they are clean. Mm-hmm. Our our stores clean. In yeah. fact, crystals are clean. That's an interesting thing. If you go in crystal stores, and you look at their crystals and everything, it's not easy to dust in a crystal store. Okay, no. just so you know. Yeah. So if it's a crystal store is dusted, which ours are, what? How often? Probably daily, every other day, if not daily. We have a rotation. It says a lot about those stores if they're clean and dusted. And if you go into a crystal store yeah. where it's not, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. And a lot of, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell. A lot no. of times they aren't clean. I, now that oh, you're no, mentioning that, I was like, you're right. They get really dusty because of very. all you get the, the rock dust. Mm-hmm. They get very dusty. We even have um, like geodes that we clean inside the geodes to mm-hmm. make sure the open crystals, even the big ones, just to make sure that they're energetic number one that they look good and don't have a lot of dust bunnies in them but that also that they um energetically are good the people uh Joaquina and I'll shout out to them Joaquina and Selena and Ruben and Kelly and Cassie and Marina all Erica they're all good very good at that at our stores at both locations 
keeping it really fresh and clean. But that's a really good way, just for those of you listening that are crystal lovers or any any type of shop like mine, it's very easy to tell. That's awesome. And tell me, because I have some of those, um, some chunky amethysts at home, how do you dust them? Because I've run them under the faucet and it's still like, well, am I really getting it? Or Okay, you can do that. And then you can, there's a spray, like the dry spray that you oh. can use. Um, Roger's actually sitting in the studio, just the gigs up. <laughs> yeah, so, and we're, we kind of looked at him and we're like, we can't show the whole studio now, Roger, because he's sitting in the studio. But um, my husband, Roger's in here with us and he actually cleans them a lot and he was just saying the the dry just like the computer or like the what keyboard you would do for cleaner. the tree you know the dry plants um you can use that just to clean them out you can also wash them out but then you're you're still like you said you're wondering is it just going back and in more into yeah. the, in there and then i have seen them use the kind of the feather dusters a little mm-hmm. bit just on a daily basis they're not every day doing this the dry spray right in the air just to spray it out Okay. But really, just a, a lot of people. That's a good question, because and then some of the crystals you can't just soak them in water. Like if you soaked selenite in water for two weeks, well, it would dissolve. But right. if you just wiped it with a little water, it'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, now they have all these uh, kind of natural based dusting cloths and mm-hmm. that sort of magnetically draw things exactly. out. Exactly. That'd be great too. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for plants, I like to put them out in the rain. Because um, rainwater does not spot on your plants like um, oh. our water that we drink will leave like white spots. Mm. Um, but you can also just wipe them yeah. down if you have house plants. You can too. do that with the crystals too. Yeah. As long as you just remember to, you know, as long as the mose is something, the mose hardness is that, that they can be outside mm-hmm. and won't, like if you forgot and you left something out for two weeks, well, if it kind of disintegrated in the water, if it was raining for, several days or a week, Mm -hmm. you know, wouldn't be good. Well, and one of the things that I always think is important um, post-Christmas is, so, you know, I have, to me, the ending of the frenzy is the cleanup. And that's why I'm like, I got to get this done. I got to get it out of there. But then there is the calm. And I am taking like several days off post-Christmas this year because I needed to really unwind and relax. And I want to commit to the time to my family. Like if I make lunch, Uh, Even if it's just, you know, grilled cheese, everybody's coming out to hang out with me. And that's like, you know, that's the time that I want. And they're like, thanks, mom. And, you know, to be appreciated is so important. Yes. And it's, uh, you know, it's about the quality of service and time that we have with each other. So, um, you know, it's uh, very much for me to get back into that Zen mode of things. And so that I'm starting the new year off in a place that's like I've got peace of mind rather than feeling stressed which to me has basically been the entire time between Thanksgiving and Christmas (laughs) so well and that's honest because that's how a lot of people are Mm -hmm. I mean they really are because especially those that have the responsibility of doing a lot of the work um there might be probably in a relationship they're both people probably have different things that they are responsible for that could be stressful in different ways financially or 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 both could have those Mm -hmm. those stressors but i do believe that we i guess my thing to say would be to anyone yeah there are certain things that you have to take on that may be a stressor but get rid of the things that you don't have to take on because as life goes on those things are not going to be as important as you get older and older, you will, you will realize, and take it from me, that a lot of those things, and I'm not talking to you, Megan, but a lot of listeners that they think they have to do. You know, they have to go drag their kids to get a picture taken with Santa. Well, usually that's, that, you know, usually those kids can't stand Santa. <laughs> that was a horrible thing for me to say, but it's just true. They can't. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they really don't want to go. That's a parent thing. Um, so I'd say just chunk that. I There's my controversial remember. thing for the week. How about that? Just I, chunk Santa. <laughs> I will say one thing that we did uh, when my son was little. We went to Neiman Marcus downtown, mm-hmm. and Santa there wears mink, red and white mink. It's the most beautiful costume. So you got in Santa's lap. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I should have right. Yeah. Um, no, I put my son on there, and he didn't. He looked a little terrified, but he didn't freak out and cry. But that was the only time because there wasn't a line. It's and, 
you know, any other place you go, it's crazy and insane and your child gets stressed out. And it usually is really rough. And it is for the parents. And so I, my little sister sent me pictures one year and her son is like, wow you know screaming i mean i think it's kind of cute to be honest a friend of mine sent me her pictures and they were hilarious but i'm just saying if there's something truly that you just really don't enjoy doing just because everybody else says you need to do it doesn't mean you have to do it yeah there just shouldn't be all these shoulds around the holidays there really shouldn't be shouldn't be as much stress Mm -hmm. Really? The word should comes with is synonymous with judgment. Yeah. And so it it takes on a whole different meaning when you start thinking about it that way. I mean, really do what you want to do. Go to the services you want to go to. Um, you know, maybe go to a candlelight service mm-hmm. if you want to with your family. They're beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but maybe something, you know, but let your kids wear a t-shirt if they feel like it i mean it's just not that big of a deal it really isn't a promise yep (laughs) so so what did you bring for a crystal today so i brought um three crystals working together and i actually brought um a gift for you megan and for matt our producer Um, oh thank you very much you're You're the best and so matt if we need to size this uh, for you or if you want to give it as a gift re-gifted it's up to you okay it's fine with me but i brought um i put crystals for easing holiday stress i guess it's recovery so i kind of Mm -hmm. messed that up but either way it's Um, all good these are ones we've all gone over before on our podcast the first is black tourmaline and black tourmaline is the crystal that will absorb negativity but then transmute it for good because we know energy has to go somewhere Mm -hmm. right and so it kind of recycles it it's it recycles and brings about positivity so they're great to have on you great to have at work great to have beside your front door nice for people that walk in who have no clue that that's why and by the way really i know we're out of time but really quickly a friend of mine said i bought the black tourmaline for beside my front door and the corners of my home and my granddaughter got the ones by the front door and she said it's a rock it's not supposed to be inside and she threw it out the door (laughs) and i said well we've got more of those she transmuted that (laughs) negativity she she put that negativity right back where it belonged um and then the blue lace agate is one of my favorite crystals of all time it is just one of the most soothing crystals. They're a mm-hmm. little bit expensive right now. I've explained that before why, because that situation with the mine, that's usually why crystals go up or down in cost. Uh, and then, or one of the reasons. And then lipidolite, which compa- the purple one, purple, purple pink, that contains lithium. So that's to calm us down and to relieve that anxiety. And so I'll see, Megan, do you want to hold that one up? Oh yeah, it's beautiful. And hold it where they can see it if you can find and yeah. so there you go. You've got the lipidolite. You've got the black tourmaline is the black and the blue in the middle is the blue lace agate. I have to say these are three of my favorites, which is really fascinating that you put them together because I literally ran across a piece of black tourmaline in a place that was on sale, but it wasn't labeled. And I was like, what is this? I, I know I want this, but I don't know what it is. And then I always am drawn to blue lace agate and I've been craving the lipidolite Mm. you call it and i just um uh, yeah so i'm like tickled pink thank you so much you're welcome this is awesome you're welcome what plant or herb did you bring so um i brought in thyme uh today and thyme was pretty interesting um i've gotten a new research book on essential oils too because of course they're plant-based and um i'm always looking for new um nuggets of knowledge that i can really soak up and um, we naturally absorb absorb oils, so soak up would be correct. Um, so thyme is one of the oldest uh, dated medicinal plants, and it goes all the way back to the 16th century BC. Uh, even the Egyptians used it back in uh, in the embalming process uh, because it has such strong antibacterial uh, properties, and um, so it's helpful for anti-aging, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antifungal, antiviral, anti-parasitic, and it's highly anti-microbial. Uh, so um, it's your it's your big anti-plant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, one of the active ingredients in it is thymol, though. And so they use thymol in, um, like, mouthwash and um, in vapor rubs and stuff. So it is going to help to um, – it freshens your breath and opens up your chest. And, again, it's fighting off the, the stinky bacteria in there. Um, you can also burn it like you do sage. Um, that can be really helpful as far as purifying the house. Um, you can use it as an essential oil to help overcome fatigue and exhaustion. Um, it's also, though, from like a magical standpoint, they use it to, um, if you like sleep with it under your pillow, you should sleep better and have more um, psychic dreams and things like that. Um, so, and when I was re researching some of the medicinal properties, it has 47 phytochemicals and nutrients. That's wow. like a top-notch plant right there. And we think of it, you know, you add thyme in your chicken or turkey or whatever. Um, chops up really well. But, you know, don't be afraid to add it to your smoothies and things like that. Um, it's an all-around super functional plant. Um, thyme on toast, excellent. You know, you can make thyme butter and things like that or just sprinkle it on there. Um, it's also helpful if you want to eliminate gas um, or reduce fever, headaches, or mucus. Um, it lowers cholesterol. It's good for asthma, bronchitis, croup, any kind of respiratory problems. And it's also good if you're having any liver problems. So wow. It's yeah. like a do-all. Yeah. Um, you know, pretty much your cooking herbs are, you You know, we think of them from a flavor standpoint, but you really cannot go wrong with improving your body's health by adding um, herbs to your cooking. So I would love to see people... Um, you know, really dive in and fearlessly use these herbs um, because it makes your food prettier, tastes better, but, I mean, it's so, so, so good for your body. I think so. you should post a picture on your Instagram of thyme toast. Thyme toast, <laughs> yeah. I think that's, or you said toast for, or toasting thyme or thyme yeah. toast. It sounded like a, yeah, it's it's catchy. I think we should see that. It'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, It'd be how, awesome. Do you, how do you do that? Do you just kind of sprinkle it on there or how, yeah, does, that, so, how does that work? I mean, what I would do is probably you can either add thyme to the butter and then okay. or you can um, butter your toast. I see I use a toaster oven, not a regular, to not the wow. slice thing. Um, but I would just put uh, uh, the butter and the thyme on it and then pop it in the toaster. Um, you could also uh, just melt the butter in a pan and kind of toss it with the thyme and let it kind of fry a little bit and then... It, you know pour it on your toast after that would be good add a little yeah. extra salt um, the image is creeping thyme there's a lot of different types of thyme um, they're great in the garden one of my favorite one is called elfin thyme mm. and it's little tiny and you can put it in between rocks and stuff um, so but thyme's pretty hardy it's evergreen here it makes a great landscape plant um, has little tiny purple or white blooms on it so I look forward to seeing that post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think Matt, cool. are, are we at the end of our time, or do we have time for readings? Uh, you've got well, you've got about two minutes left, so I guess it's kind of up to you about if you want to try to fit one in or not. Let's do a reading real quick. I okay. think it'll be good for everybody. So, because um, everybody's kind of getting ready for the new year, one thing I want to keep it would love for people to keep in mind if you want to post your comments. Um, Next week, we are going to be doing uh, kind of New, Year, New Year's readings on the show. So you can post on Facebook, you know, questions that you might have that we can look at answering. It's going to be very interactive. Um, so we're real excited about that. Right. Okay. So I pulled two charms. And we've got the Influence of the Angels Tarot deck. Uh, this is available at Soultopia. It's beautiful. I can vouch for this deck. Uh and so we thought we'd use this for Christmas. Okay, yeah. So, and then we've got um, Do it the, hand, the Hamsa, the hand with the eye in the center. And we we've got that a all the time, don't we? Pegasus. Yes, sorry. No. I just, I, it's got a third eye in the middle of the hand. I think that's probably why we draw it all the time. <laughs> okay, so draw two. Okay. We're just going to do one card for each. Oh, just one. Yeah. Okay, so for the Hamsa, we got Seven of Pentacles. And for the Pegasus, we have Five of Swords. And this beautiful deck, wow. They, they really, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, okay, so uh, is it okay if I dive in? Yes. So for the Hamsa, if that's the charm that you picked today, um, to me this is, 
you're going to you're really driven to kind of continually work this week and to finish up things that you really want to see be done before the new year and it feels like it it's going to be more of a push for you and I don't feel like you're going to be relaxing quite as much but do know that um you know your rewards will be once the new year rolls in and then that's when you'll be able to kind of go okay I made it so your thoughts yeah I feel the same Uh, to me it's a beautiful card and it's she's looking happy with her results I mean she's looking up but she knows that she's almost there she's done a good job and and there's a reason that she's uh, worked and and put the amount of maybe not stress but the amount of work she has into this season for so the for those of you that drew this one with the hand I just believe that uh, strongly your efforts are going to pay off so just begin to to relax into that and know that it's a pretty obvious one to me yeah 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 okay and the other charm is the pegasus and this is a very different read um it's five of swords both numbers traditionally uh kind of connect with challenges sevens and fives um and what i got from this is that this holiday season might have been a little hard for you uh the people that picked a pegasus dealing with other people and uh, and even past kind of emotional um, baggage that they've carried over the years. So, um, you know, this is a time to find uh, that I'd love to see you focus on forgiveness uh, for yourself and for others and really think about that emotional let go. And I would add to that, it's beautiful on this card. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but how the angel is just very large and watching over this whole situation where it feels like or you may feel like there really aren't any winners in this situation you may feel like uh uh, why what was the purpose it's kind of opposite of the Mm -hmm. first one it's not like why did i do all this what was the purpose this didn't come out the way i thought it would come out just remember that you do have those who love you uh your your angels your whatever source or god is to you and um, your spirit guides, whoever work with you. And that's what Pegasus to me is representing in this one. And then mm-hmm. this this big angel looking over the situation saying, you know, there actually is a much bigger picture. So always remember when you're down and you're feeling like something's not, um, like it's hopeless when you pull back, because I've been there, when you pull back and you try to look at the much bigger picture than just that isolate, isolated uh, frame shot or whatever that's called uh, you will find some hope there yeah uh, to me the Pegasus picture. was very much about rising above the situation mm-hmm. um, and again connecting with your guardian angels it's the angel deck we have an angel here we have the Pegasus with wings so that's all v- yeah. very much the angelic realm right. cool all right everyone <laughs> we want to thank you for joining us today we hope you keep third eye thinking Um, If you enjoyed today's show, give us a five-star review and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to Matt Stoker, our producer, and to Real News Communication Networks for hosting. Y'all have a good week and we'll see you soon.